Have you ever had those days where you just feel like there are not enough hours in the day to get things done? I've been feeling pretty overwhelmed lately, so I decided I was going to share with you five tips to help establish a routine in your reselling business and just help you get the ball rolling every day so that you can check things off your list and feel accomplished at the end of the day. Hey everyone, welcome back to Lori's Boston Found, where Thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori. I am a full-time reseller on Poshmark primarily, and I dabble a little bit in eBay and direct sales and such. Um, I have just a quick video today. I feel like I'm in one of those places right now where I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed with the amount of things that I want to do for my business. Fall is coming and that's typically a time where I like to get motivated. And so I'm trying to get my act together, which is an ongoing battle for me. But I thought it would be nice to share five tips to just get organized and get into a routine. And before I really get into anything, I just wanna thank today's sponsor. I have an ongoing partnership with Skillshare and I'm just so grateful to be a part of their team. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about Skillshare later in the video. Mm -hmm. but I My podcast partner, Daniela, um, she is Ivy and Blush Bottega, did an Instagram um, live a couple days ago. And they were talking about like work-life balance and there were just a lot of things in her live that resonated with me. So I think what got me a little bit behind the eight ball was bringing my daughter to school and kind of underestimating just like the emotional toll it would take and just the time away from home in my business. I was away last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I had this idea, I was all stressed because I didn't put out my video on Wednesday night and I typically do Wednesday and Sunday night videos. So before I left for Pennsylvania, I said, I know what I'll do. I'll put four videos out next week to kind of make up for the fact that I'm not doing a video on Wednesday. But it's not like the world is gonna stop if I don't do a video on a Wednesday. So I'm like, I'll just do four videos. So then I got home from Pennsylvania trying to regroup after dropping Angie off and all of a sudden now I'm like, oh, I now have to put four videos out. Well, I ended up putting out three out of the four videos and I think I put a lot of heart into all of those videos and I'm happy that they got up. But now I'm here and I'm like, I need to do another video and I just kind of hit a wall. And so I just wanted to come up with some tips for myself and for anybody who needs this today or whenever you see this video. Um, to just help you find your rhythm. So let's get into it. I have five tips. The number one thing that I think helps me is to tackle the priority things first. A lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is probably stuff you've heard before, but for me, I just needed a reminder this week. So the first thing is to take care of the stuff that's the most important. So if I wake up and I know that I haven't listed in a few days and that's my priority, I should just bang it out first thing in the morning. Same with exercise. If exercise is one of your goals and you leave it till the end of the day, there's just so much that can get in the way. And I am always fascinated by the feeling I have when I wake up early and I get things done early. I'm not like a late riser, but you know, I'll come downstairs like quarter of seven, make my coffee, hop on the couch, snuggle with the dogs, answer some emails, respond to comments on YouTube, share my closet. Like it's casual and it's not like I'm doing nothing, but I'm not like really doing anything with total intention. One of the tips that I heard on Daniela's live was from a good friend, Leslie, a reseller's passion. If you don't know who Leslie is, you really should familiarize yourself with her. She's everywhere. She's kind of like a life coach to me. One of the things she said she does is every morning when she makes her coffee, she goes and she photographs things that she's going to list for the day. And it's only like 10 minutes, but it really just starts the day going. And wouldn't your day as a reseller start out so nicely if you did something that was really effective for your business? So maybe it's not taking photographs, but maybe it is cross-posting for 10 minutes. That is a huge struggle for me. But if I carved out a time every day, I think what's coming through here is the routine is really important. So if I carved out 
a ritual every day that I did for even 10 minutes, I feel like the benefit would be pretty incredible. Leslie starts her coffee, she photographs, and then when the 10 minutes is up, she goes upstairs. So maybe she revisits and she photographs more, maybe that's all she does in a day. It's just embedded into her ritual. And then once it's ritual, you know, it's just kind of on your calendar. You don't even need to write it down. Same with people who exercise in the morning. Uh, the handful of times I exercise first thing in the morning, I feel like a million dollars. I feel like I could do nothing the rest of the day and I would feel accomplished because I worked out. Taking care of the big stuff first thing I think is super important. And so that's number one. Number two, I kind of alluded to uh, with Leslie's example, but that's to maybe just set a timer. I used to say this to my kids. I still say this to my kids when they are overwhelmed by a project. Not that they've had any school projects in a while, but I would say, you know what? Set a timer for 15 minutes. If it's like an essay or a math problem, whatever it is, set a timer for 15 minutes. See what you get done in those 15 minutes. And then after that, give yourself permission to close the book, walk away, or if you're totally in a groove, keep on going. So this morning, when I woke up, I was thinking a little bit about what Leslie's thing was and I started my coffee. I woke up early and I went downstairs. I think it was like 6.15, which is very early for me to be in my basement, in my studio where I take my pictures. And I said to myself, just take pictures for 10 minutes and then go drink coffee. Like I'm just doing the Leslie thing. And then I went downstairs and before I knew it, it was 7.20 and it was still relatively early in the morning, but I had photographed eight items and I had steamed five items and I did drafts for like five or six items. So all of a sudden it's only 7.20, I haven't had my coffee yet, and I had only intended on going downstairs and doing the whole, like once the coffee's done, I'll stop taking pictures. And I ended up being down there for almost an hour. So two things there, I was tackling something that was really important because I need to organize my office. I'm, I'm always needing to take photographs, put away inventory, and to just get that over with first thing in the morning was great. I did some drafts, I packaged up a few pieces of inventory and put them away. I also pulled sales for the day while I was down there. Um, so it, it turned into this super productive one hour. And it essentially all began with just setting a timer and saying, just do this for 10 minutes. And that 10 minutes turned into an hour. So I found that to be really helpful. Number three, and again, <laughs> this is stuff that has been said many times before, but for me, when the day first starts, I can get sucked into social media really easily. The other thing that's tricky for us as resellers is our business is online. So I can say, well, I responded to comments on Instagram or YouTube, or I shared my closet, or I sent out offers. But if I really extracted the amount of time that it takes to do those things, I mean, sharing your closet can take some time, but let's not even look at sharing your closet. Let's just talk about like responding to Instagram comments, sending offers to likers. The time that it took for me to do those sorts of things may take if you extract the time from the total time spent on the couch watching Good Morning America, it might be 10 to 20 minutes of my time. But then the rest of the time is spent scrolling through Instagram, you know, reading funny things, maybe going on TikTok. I have not gone down the TikTok rabbit hole yet. I have it. One day I spent way too much time on TikTok and I'm like afraid to go back to it. I always say before I know it, uh, Kelly and Ryan are on and it's 9 a.m. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm still on the couch, it's 9 a.m. I just think as much as we all love social media, it is a huge time sucker. It's just trying to have the discipline to know when to shut it down. And if you can shut it down, it doesn't even have to be social media. Maybe it's the TV that is taking up your time. Maybe it's just watching the news in the morning, but whatever it is that is kind of white noise that takes your time in the morning, which is when you can be really productive, try to minimize it. I wanna talk a little bit about Skillshare, my sponsor for today's video. One of the classes I'm looking forward to taking on Skillshare is a class on creating a content calendar. So as much as I love all of my paper planning, when it comes to content creation, for me, I have a lot of moving parts and I'll say, this is a video I wanna put out on this day. And then it comes time to film that video and something's going on and I wanna talk about something else. That's what I was using this planner for. And what I found was that I was erasing and, and crossing things off and doing arrows as things moved around. 
So I'm trying to create a content calendar. I'm currently using Google Calendar. All of my YouTube videos are in red and all of my Instagram posts are in yellow and then I'm moving things around as they change. So today's video is actually going to be fall trends and then this was just weighing on me, this kind of overwhelming feeling that I needed to get back into a routine. So I decided to talk about this today and then I just moved over my um, fall trends to another day. So what I'm working on right now on Skillshare is a course run by Tamara Boots, B-U-D-Z, and it's how to create a custom content planning calendar. And in addition to this, there's also a class led by Angelica Robb, and it's about planning your life with Google Calendar. So I kind of feel like I have the paper planning down, but I'm not really good at keeping up with the digital planning. And for somebody like me, I can use all the help that I can get. I always say to people, if I'm on your calendar, never feel bad about reminding me because I have a lot of balls in the air. Click the link in my description to get two free months of premium membership with Skillshare. And once those two months are up, just know that this is such an affordable program. An annual subscription is less than $10 per month. I think given all the twists and turns this year has taken, it's a really nice time to just lean into our creative side and maybe take a class that we've been wanting to take for some time. So my next tip is specific to reselling, um, but I find that it does save me time when I'm in a pinch, and that is to photograph things that are easy to photograph. So for me, challenging things are things that need deep hilling or things that have to have lint removed from them or things that need to be steamed. Those things can all take a lot of time. Things that might look better in a flat lay or whatever it is that is time consuming, I try to avoid those things if I'm in a time crunch and I'm trying to reach a listing goal. So for example, this morning, when I thought I was only gonna be downstairs for 10 minutes, I photographed a couple belts and I did shoes. Shoes are great because they don't require measuring. Sports bras, shorts, these are all things that I can throw in my photo box and take pictures of really, really quickly. Things I try to avoid in addition to the things I already mentioned are items that need to be put on my mannequin. And if I am taking pictures of like shirts, things like with patterns, like this top right here, this would be a quick and easy photo shoot. So you take the pictures and I always do my measurements while I'm taking pictures. And then I just edit my very first picture. I've talked about this before. I brighten it up with PicTap Go. I take just one photo, like whatever will be my cover photo. I brighten it up, I take my measurements, I hop onto descriptions and I will just do chest and length. And then sometimes I'll note the size. I take a picture of the fabric content, boom. I save it as a draft, just that first picture. So now you're taking pictures that are easy to photograph and then you're also creating some drafts. Whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed and I know I have to get things listed, I just take pictures of easy things and then it's like I'm checking off that box. So I'm doing five to seven listings, um, but they are not really complicated listings. So that is a tip that really works for me. So far we have take care of the big stuff, set a timer if that helps you to get motivated, avoid social media, photograph things that are easy to photograph. And the last thing I probably should have said first is just plan your day. I recently became an ambassador for Passion Planner and I have to tell you just a quick story about it. Their program is not like a lot of ambassador programs. They have a referral program for anybody. So if you refer a friend, you get a certain amount of credit towards purchases. But to become an ambassador, it was an application process. And I have been pretty obsessed with Passion Planner for many years. I actually wrote to them a long time ago and asked them to be an ambassador or an affiliate and they never wrote back to me and I was kind of sad. I don't really reach out to a lot of companies, but there are certain companies that I really love and so I will reach out to them. So I joined their referral program and I recently did a video and I talked about them. And then they had this application to become an ambassador. And I was like way more excited than I should have been. So I applied to be an ambassador. They were taking 500 people. 
And I was like, okay, I just did a video that included them in my link. I've been part of their referral program. I've sent them a little bit of business. Like I was feeling pretty confident and they're accepting 500 people. So I spent all this time writing an application for them, counting down the days until they review the applications and let us know. And I was not selected to be an ambassador. And I almost cried. Like it, I was, it affected me way more than it should have. I was really sad that I didn't get the ambassador program. So I just messaged them and I said, you know, is there anything I can do differently? Is there something that I was missing? And in the meantime, I looked online to see like people who I like, I did hashtag Pash ambassador. And I saw some of the people who had been selected and quite honestly, they were really impressive. Like, so what I do for reselling, they do for passion planner. Like they have whole channels devoted to planning and, and they are an international company. So anyways, they wrote back, you didn't do anything wrong. Like stay with it. And it's a one year contract that you're an ambassador. I'm like, I'm just going to keep trying. And I said, I, you know, I will continue to spread the Pash love. A couple days later, I opened my email into my excitement. They had said they had such an overwhelming response for people who wanted to become ambassadors. They decided to open up a few more positions and then they accepted me into the program. And I was so excited. I have to say, and it's not, it's not like I'm making bank being an ambassador. It's nothing like that. I just love this company and I just wanted to be affiliated with them on a deeper level. So here I am. I am now a passion planner ambassador and I am so excited to just jump in. It goes without saying that obviously one of my tips is going to be plan your day. Um, so I have been, I have the daily planner, which is more like a to-do list. And I also have my um, big baby here that is more of a traditional planner. So like I'll plan my weeks out and they're very open-ended. Um, but when I really want to focus, I do use the day, the daily, and this is a relatively new style for them, but this is just one day at a glance. And sometimes I will, I will do two days in here if I don't check everything off my list, but writing things down just really helps me. And on days when I film like today, I literally write in shower because I have to shower before I do a video. Um, and I, I really break down my day, shower, lunch, list five items, film, I wrote in a break, edit, and then invoices that I need to sell for send for people who did direct sales, any appointments, plan Instagram posts, like all sorts of things that I just write down. And as I check them off, it just makes me feel really good. And it also keeps me really focused. And also at the end of the day, if I'm feeling like I didn't get a lot done, if I look back in my day planner and I am able to cross things off my list, it makes me feel good. Another thing that I wanna mention about the Passion Planner is that they have downloads online. So if you're not sure about the planner, about the size you want, because they have this larger size, they have a classic size that I think is one size smaller, and then this daily size. I also have this academic planner, um, which is, which is set up in the same fashion as my larger one. It's not like a daily setup. Um, but you may want to test the waters and see what size planner works for you. And they have downloads for free, so you can go to their website. And since we are talking about developing good habits and structure, one of the downloads that they have that I have printed out is a habit tracker. And you can cut these out and put them right into your planner. So I've been trying out different forms that they have online. They also have one for your water intake, which I think is really cool if that's a habit you're trying to develop. So they offer these great printables that can just work their way into your planner. They also have a finance tracker, all sorts of things. And you can print them out in the size that you want. One of my favorite printouts is the year at a glance. It was a part of my daily planner, I believe, but it wasn't in my big book. So I printed it out and I put it right in my planner. What I'm using this for is an expense tracker. So I'm listing what I'm spending out at the thrift store. And I just like taped that right into my planner. So now I can look at a glance and just see how much I'm spending in a month and when to tap the brakes, um, if you know what I mean. But I just love Passion Planner, so I'm passionate about them. 
So I've been thinking about doing a plan with me video. Comment below if you have any interest in seeing that. It has nothing to do with reselling, except a lot of my planning is about reselling in YouTube. So you can let me know if that is something that would be interesting to you. They're like ASMR videos to me. People set their lights up from above and it's just, it's really fun to watch people do their planning. So that wraps up my five tips for getting organized and establishing a routine for your reselling business. Take care of the big stuff first. Set a timer to challenge yourself and get things done. Turn off social media until you have accomplished what you want for the day. Photograph easy items to just boost your productivity when you're trying to achieve listing goals. Create a plan for the day, regardless of the planner you're using. Some people might love digital planning, whatever it is. Get down what you wanna get accomplished in a day and enjoy and celebrate as you check off those boxes as you accomplish things. And hopefully at the end of the day, if you applied some of these methods, you will feel a little bit more accomplished. I hope that you are all handling the transitions back to school. I know a lot of you have kids at home and you are now a teacher homeschooling in addition to running your business. So wherever you are and whatever you need to get done today, I hope that this little video helped inspire you a little bit. Bye everyone and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to link in my description to get your premium subscription today.